Russia's sight. 31 just went dark after a 20-ton platform crashed into the flame trench. This isn't just any launch pad. It's the only facility that can launch Progress spacecraft to the ISS. Progress doesn't just deliver cargo. It refuels the Russian thrusters that keep the station from spinning out of control. What happens when those thrusters run dry? SpaceX claims Dragon can handle it using off-axis thrusters to create the exact torque needed for attitude control. But can a solution designed in months really replace what Russia built over decades? November 27th started like any other launch day at Baikonur Cosmodrome. The Soyuz rocket lifted off from Site-31, carrying crew safely to the ISS. Mission accomplished, right? But then engineers noticed something was missing. That massive 20-ton service platform, the structure that preps the engines before every launch, wasn't where it should be. The rocket's thrust had sent it crashing into the flame trench below, and now it's buried under tons of scorched metal and concrete. How does a team preparing for space flight forget to secure a platform the size of a city bus? Here's where this gets serious. Site 31 isn't just another launch pad Russia can swap out. It's the only Russian facility currently configured to launch both Progress cargo ships and crewed Soyuz capsules to the ISS. According to internal schedules, two Progress missions were supposed to launch before July 2027, with another crewed flight planned for next summer. All of that is now on indefinite hold, while Russia figures out how to repair a pad that was never supposed to fail like this. What happens to the ISS when its primary supply line just vanishes overnight? Let's talk about what progress actually does, because this isn't just about delivering food and spare parts. Progress is the only vehicle that can refuel the Russian thrusters on the ISS. Those thrusters are critical for something called attitude control, keeping the station pointed in the right direction. The ISS uses a combination of American gyroscopes and Russian thrusters to stay stable. The gyroscopes spin up to adjust the station's orientation, but over time they get saturated. Think of it like a spinning top that eventually wobbles too much. The Russian thrusters fire to desaturate those gyroscopes, essentially resetting them so they can keep working. Without that thruster fuel, the gyroscopes max out, and the station starts drifting. Can the ISS survive if those thrusters go silent? Now American cargo ships like Northrop Grumman's Cygnus and SpaceX's Cargo Dragon can deliver supplies. They can even push the station higher to counteract atmospheric drag. That's called reboosting. But here's the problem nobody talks about. There's currently no way to transfer fuel from American vehicles into the Russian propulsion system. The plumbing doesn't match. The protocols don't match. It would be like trying to refuel a diesel truck with a gasoline pump. Technically, both are fuel, but good luck making it work. So what happens when Russia's propellant tanks hit empty? This is where SpaceX's solution gets interesting. Engineers have proposed a workaround that doesn't require any fuel transfer at all. If a cargo ship can fire its main engines directly through the ISS's center of mass, it pushes the station upward for reboost. But here's the clever part. Dragon has clusters of smaller thrusters positioned away from that center line. By adjusting the timing of those thruster pulses, firing some a bit longer than others, operators can create an off-axis torque. That twist is exactly what's needed to desaturate the gyroscopes, essentially doing the Russian thruster's job without ever touching Russian hardware. Is this engineering brilliance, or are we just patching over a system that was never meant to work this way? SpaceX has already proven they can reboost the ISS. They ran a successful test using a modified cargo dragon with a special trunk section, and it worked flawlessly. No complex workarounds, no welding extra communication equipment onto the station just to make different systems talk to each other. It was clean, efficient, and repeatable. 
The company is now positioned to handle both reboost and attitude control using the same vehicle. But there's a catch. This solution burns significantly more fuel than progress, and every kilogram of propellant costs money. How long can NASA afford to keep paying for what Russia used to do for free? Some engineers have suggested reviving the European Space Agency's Automated Transfer Vehicle, or ATV. Those massive cargo ships could haul three times more supplies than Progress and had their own reboost capabilities. In theory, a next-generation ATV could fill the gap left by Russia's grounded fleet. But the ATV program ended in 2014, and restarting it would take years of development and billions in funding. Meanwhile, the ISS needs solutions now, not in five years. Does Europe even have the political will to jump back into ISS logistics? Then there's the wild card. Could Starship boost the ISS? On paper, yes, Starship's Raptor engines have more than enough thrust, but in practice, even one Raptor running at minimum power could rattle the station like a tin can. The ISS wasn't designed to handle that kind of force. Plus, Starship hasn't performed a single docking test with the station yet. The risks are off the charts. Would NASA really bet the ISS on an unproven spacecraft? This brings us to the bigger picture. SpaceX isn't just helping out during a temporary Russian setback. They're essentially holding up the entire ISS operation right now. Crew Dragon is the only NASA-certified vehicle flying astronauts to orbit. Boeing's Starliner still needs one more uncrewed test flight before it's cleared for human missions. Cygnus cargo ships now launch on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. Even future reboost missions will likely rely on Dragon. As space journalist Eric Berger put it, if there's any emergency on the ISS at this point, all the responsibility falls on SpaceX. Crew transport, Dragon. Cargo delivery, Dragon or Cygnus on Falcon 9. Reboost, Dragon. Attitude control, Dragon. How did we end up with one company holding every critical card? There are advantages to this concentration. SpaceX has launched over 20 successful ISS missions since 2020. When Boeing's Starliner astronauts got stranded last year, Dragon was repurposed for a rescue mission within weeks. The company's reusable rockets mean lower costs. NASA isn't paying multiple providers just to keep the station running. That money can fund new programs, lunar missions, Mars exploration, deep space telescopes. SpaceX is reliable, fast, and battle-tested. But what happens when reliable becomes irreplaceable? The company is already juggling an enormous workload. They're launching hundreds of Starlink satellites every month. They're testing Starship for NASA's Artemis program. And now they might shoulder all ISS logistics while Russia rebuilds its launch infrastructure. Even SpaceX has limits. If they get stretched too thin, expect higher prices, longer delays, and fewer rockets available for other missions. What's the backup plan if SpaceX can't deliver? And here's the uncomfortable question nobody wants to ask out loud. What does this incident say about the state of Russian spaceflight? The launch pad failure wasn't a freak accident caused by weather or a technical malfunction. A 20-ton service platform, essential equipment that engineers interact with before every launch, was left unsecured. It fell into the flame trench because someone didn't follow protocol. This points to serious gaps in final inspections and quality control. Some observers have sarcastically noted that QA based on vodka is working. The comparison has been made to leaving your car out of gear and walking away, except this car costs hundreds of millions of dollars and supports human life in orbit. Is this failure an isolated incident, or does it reflect systemic problems across Russia's aerospace industry? Earlier this year, a test of the Sarmat ICBM destroyed its own launch facility. That's two major Russian launch sites accidentally destroyed in less than a year. Experts are quietly asking whether these quality issues extend to other strategic programs. 
If Russia can't secure a service platform at a decades-old launch pad, what does that say about the maintenance and operation of more complex systems? And more importantly, how much longer can the ISS depend on Russian hardware that's showing these kinds of cracks? So here's where we stand. SpaceX has gone from being NASA's commercial partner to becoming the ISS's sole lifeline. Dragon handles crew transport, cargo delivery, reboost operations, and now potentially attitude control. All the jobs that were supposed to be split between multiple countries and companies. Russia's launch pad failure didn't create this dependency. It just exposed how deep it already runs. The irony is hard to miss. The ISS was built as a symbol of international cooperation, with Russia and America sharing the workload equally. Now one company headquartered in Hawthorne, California, is doing what an entire nation used to handle. SpaceX's off-axis thruster solution is brilliant engineering, but it's also a band-aid on a system that's starting to show its age. The station is over 25 years old. Russia's infrastructure is crumbling. And we're patching problems with solutions that were never part of the original design. The real question isn't whether SpaceX can handle this workload. They've proven they can. The question is, what happens when the backup has no backup? If Falcon 9 gets grounded for any reason, the entire station operation stops. If Dragon development hits a snag, there's no plan B. We've traded international redundancy for American efficiency, and we won't know if that was the right call until something goes wrong. So what do you think? Should NASA push for more providers, or is SpaceX's monopoly actually the safest bet? Drop your answer in the comments. I'm reading all of them. If this breakdown helped you understand what's really happening with the ISS, Hit that like button and share this with anyone who still thinks Russia's space program is what it used to be. And subscribe to Atlas Space, because we're tracking every move SpaceX makes as they become the only game in orbit. Thanks for watching.